Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, or all three. I have no idea, but welcome to Kono's Crash Course. This is week 17 over the first seven presidents of the United States. I'll be doing a similar style to what I did last week, where I'm just going to go over all the presidents in like a list form. So let's go ahead and get started. Number one is George Washington. He served two terms from 1789 to 1797. His wife was Martha, and his vice president was John Adams. He had no political party, but his vice president Adams was a vocal federalist, which is someone who wants a strong central government. Washington was sworn into office in New York City and never actually lived in the White House because it wasn't built until 1800. During his second term, him and Adams began disagreeing a lot more on policies and stuff, with Washington taking more of a Republican stance or one that is focusing on individual rights. Number two is John Adams. He served one turn from 1797 to 1801. His wife was Abigail and his vice president was Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, he was vice president for Washington and now he is president. His wife Abigail was very into politics and she acted as an advisor to Adams. Plus the White House now became the official residence of the president during Adams' term. It acted as a gathering place for visiting ambassadors and the first lady basically acted as a hostess for all the guests. But there were huge tensions to Developing between Adams and Jefferson, even more than what was between him and Washington. You see, in these days, the vice president was whoever had the second most amount of votes, which could cause some serious conflicts. I mean, think of it like, what if Hillary Clinton was the vice president of Donald Trump? Like, that would be awful. They would not be able to get along with anything. Like, we're having that kind of situation right here. So Jefferson was a heavy Republican, which conflicted with Adams' Federalist view. And this conflict escalated during the election of 1800 where the two were brutal in their campaigning against each other. They accused the other of so many vile things, and they were slandering their name and all the bad stuff. One of Adam's main tricks was saying that Jefferson's wife had died a few years back, which was a true fact, but he said that an unmarried man should not run their country because apparently that's a crime? I guess? But in the end, Jefferson did win the campaign, and their conflict died down after that. And so number three is Thomas Jefferson. He served two terms from 1801 to 1809. His wife died in 1782, like I said, so he wasn't married while in office, and his vice president was Aaron Burr and also George Clinton. He did a whole lot of stuff while in office. The first was addressing the problem that the country needed to be expanded. They were running out of room. He decided that exploring west was a good idea, and so he carried out the Louisiana a purchase. The French owned a lot of land out west, but they were in dire need of money, so they sold the land to Jefferson for $15 million. So now they had all this land, they needed to explore it and map it out. So Lewis and Clark were hired and assigned to travel through the land and basically figure out what was all there. Along the way, they met the Indian Sacagawea, who acted as their translator while her husband guided them. Their goal was to find a waterway to the Pacific Ocean, but they never did find one. Another thing that Jefferson did during this time was was add the 12th Amendment, which helped clear up the election process some. It made it where the votes for president and vice president were separate, which would help out a lot so we wouldn't have a situation where like the vice president and main president had like totally conflicting views on everything. Also during this time, Jefferson's vice president, Aaron Burr, was really mad at some guy named Alexander Hamilton. He was one of the founding fathers and liked Jefferson's policies, but apparently Burr didn't, and so they didn't get along that well. Dr. T didn't really explain it that much, but they don't like each other. So Burr challenged Alexander Hamilton to a duel in New Jersey where that kind of stuff is legal. Anywhere else you can't really just have a gun duel in the middle of the street. Like, no. New Jersey, apparently that's fine though. The two men met and began to fire their guns. Alexander Hamilton missed his shot, but Burr got him, and now Alexander Hamilton is dead. This made the public turn against Burr, and he was replaced the next term with George Clinton as the new vice president. Burr was charged with murder, but nothing actually came from it, so he got clean, I guess? But his entire reputation was ruined, so I don't know. Number four is James Madison. He served two terms from 1809 to 1817. His wife was Dolly, and his two vice presidents both died in office. I don't have their names. Madison and Dolly have an interesting story on how they met, well at least 
according to Dr. T it is. Um, Dolly was hired by Jefferson to be the White House hostess since she didn't have a wife at the time. Madison saw her one day and fell for her instantly and then uh, they got married and stuff. So yay! She was originally a Quaker and getting married is against Quaker rules so she did get disowned by her family which is, you know, sad. You don't want that to happen. But now she's the first lady of the White House so I guess that's pretty cool. She was a great hostess and began the egg roll tradition which is an event at the White House that still goes on today. Madison was named the father of the Constitution because I guess he fathered the Constitution? And he had different vice presidents each term and both times they died while they were in office. During his terms in office there were two men in Congress known as the War Hawks. Their real names were Henry Clay of Kentucky and John C. Calhoun of South Carolina who would later serve as vice president under Quincy Adams and Jackson. These two would give many forceful speeches while they were in Congress, with many focusing on the fact that there were still British soldiers in America. Rumors began developing that the Brits were seeking another war, and they kind of were. Soldiers had begun setting up in Louisiana, and a few skirmishes occurred, and so the War Hawks insisted that war was necessary, and so Madison declared war on Britain, and thus the War of 1812 began. Many British troops sailed in and burnt down the White House. Dolly was able to save a portrait of George Washington, but not much else else was recovered. America eventually won thanks to the Battle of New Orleans, where their troops were led by Andrew Jackson, who would later become the seventh president. Number five is James Monroe. He served two terms from 1817 to 1825. His wife was Elizabeth, and his vice president was Daniel Tompkins. He had a reputation for integrity and was regarded highly by Jefferson, who said of him, He is so honest, if you turned his soul inside out, there wouldn't be a dark spot on it. Monroe created the Monroe Document, which I guess is named after him, so it's easy to remember, which was sent out to other countries, and basically it said if they settled in North America, it would be considered an act of war. And all the other countries agreed to it because basically they had no choice. Number six is John Quincy Adams. He served one term from 1825 to 1829. His wife was Louisa, I think that's how you say it, and his vice president was J.C. Calhoun. During the election of 1824, he ran against Andrew Jackson, but something weird happened. Four competitors were splitting the electoral votes, and none of them had enough to win. This meant that the legislators got to choose the winner, and the legislation was mainly made up of Federalists, and Quincy Adams was a Federalist, so they voted him in. Jackson complained that this was unfair, but no one really listened to him. Jackson's Vice President Calhoun actually won his election, though, so they probably had conflicts there, because yeah, you had a Federalist person as President, and a Republican person as the Vice President, just like before. Not much else is really interesting about Quincy Adams' presidency, except that his wife, Louisa, or whatever that is, was the first non-American first lady. She was from Britain, so I guess that's cool. Number seven is Andrew Jackson. He served two terms from 1829 to 1837. His wife was Rachel, and his vice presidents were J.C. Calhoun and Martin Van Burhen. Now that he's finally in office, he gets to do stuff. Yay! Many people called him Old Hickory, since he was a frontiersman from Tennessee. He also used to hang out with good old Davy Crockett. One story is that there once was a businessman who didn't like Jackson and tried to kill him at a funeral with two pistols, but both pistols missed and then Davy Crockett went and knocked him out. Also, Calhoun retired after the first term of him being vice president, so Van Burhen replaced him as vice president in the second term. And that is all the information I've got on the first seven presidents. Let me know if I missed anything or if I forgot something. There is no meme review at the end of this video, but I do have the next one recorded with a few special guests and it will just be a separate video on this channel so look out for that and there will not be a government crash course so you're just gonna have to study for that one on your own oh no it's the end of the world so <laughs> sorry about that thanks for watching the video and i will see you guys next time